you're welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. This night and then a few other things that God will grant us grace to do. Now, most believers are not taught the relevance of a retreat. We teach fasting, we teach prayer, but very few believers have been taught as a corporate doctrine. Not just a time out away from people, but a retreat that you end and begin seasons in your life in the presence of God. It is risky to end and begin seasons in your life in the flesh. The most spiritual aspect of your life should be when seasons are ending and when seasons are beginning because that's when Satan gets at people. When the, when, when the seasons have been cleared up and you are moving, it's difficult for Satan to derail you. Are we together now? So it is very, very important. Every one of us must make sure that we use this one month that we're having and take out at least a few days for a quality retreat. Now, there are different kinds of retreats. We have a workers retreat as a ministry. There are all kinds of retreats. Families have their retreats. But this retreat I'm talking about is a retreat when you are ex exclusively alone with God not even husband and wife not even father and children no there are certain things God will never tell you in public there are certain things that you will only hear from God when you are alone with him are we together it is it is a very deep and simple spiritual mystery that guarantees victory many believers have not paid attention to it Retreats, very important. End of year retreats, very important. You must take out time. End of year retreat cannot be done in a few hours. That is laziness. You didn't have a retreat. You just had a quiet time. A retreat should be at least minimum two solid days. You can't spend one day. One day alone should be dedicated to Thanksgiving. Is God speaking to us? So every single one of us and those following online, we must take out time to have personal retreats. What are the activities that should happen in the retreats? Number one. Thanksgiving. Your end of year retreat is barren of God's power until you begin and lavishly communicate thanksgiving thanksgiving what we did here tonight is just a representation the same way you spend a night vigil praying and putting your needs you must thank God mention them one by one let me tell you I know this about God he never gets tired hearing people thank him Lord thank you thank you you gave me tea thank you Last year it was without blue band, you added blue band this year. So you observed it. You see that? Not Lord, you thank you for the food you gave me. That's a careless thanksgiving. Father, thank you. Last year it was tap water. Now you gave me bottled water. Thank you. That means you are careful. You are forgetting not his benefits. When it comes to requests, we are very meticulous. Lord, give me one, two, three, four. Then when it comes to thanksgiving, we say, Lord, even me, I can't remember. Are you not God? Don't you know everything? I, I just thank you for everything. Let's go to another prayer request. And God says, how selfish. Selfish. When you thank God, mention things one by one. Lord, thank you. I was on my way to Kaduna and the car wanted to capsize. You saved me. Thank you. And God said, ah, this happened January. He said, Lord, I didn't forget. You are too faithful for me to forget that event. He said, you remember this for me? Get ready for another dimension. Thanksgiving. Write it down. Thanksgiving. 
we must take out quality time to thank him number two i'm teaching you how to maximize to set the pace to maximize your retreat what do you do during your personal retreat review your progress for the current year that's what you do you sincerely honestly unashamedly review the year and i'll dwell here a bit to help us understand i want all of us to really understand these things the second thing you do at a retreat is to review the year and you don't just review the year carelessly you break your review into six different units write it down the first area is your spiritual life you review your spiritual life review your passion for god review the illumination of the word that you have accessed what do you know now that you did not know last year what do you understand now that you did not understand last year review your character create a scale for it can i say i am improving not just in the knowledge of god am i useful to society am i becoming a leader am i becoming a person of character so your spiritual life is the first area that you have to review let me tell you something about retreats you must be honest you see why you have to be alone excuse me you must be honest you must be unashamed you must be very sincere before god number two mental development and your capacity you review that area did i cooperate with the word of god to develop my mind did i acquire useful informations that will set me on the cutting edge of relevance did i just pray and fast and build my life spiritually and allowed my mind and my relevance with my sociological environment to die are we together now yes it matters that we not only grow spiritually but we sustain the ability to be useful we must be able to communicate the life of christ to our environment so you review it what books did i read what do i know about leadership did i learn anything did i build my mind what do i know about mindsets am i still carrying my village in my head moving around with it am i still carrying the attributes that keep me poor and a failure am i still carrying the attributes that make good things to live my life is god helping us number three review how much you have taken care of your body your health in a retreat yes sir that's the best place so that you can easily ask for forgiveness when because the only person you really have offended is god this body belongs to him for some of us it has been a useful year spiritually and a careless one health wise is that true review oh this year lord i apologize i ate anyhow i did all kinds of things anyhow destroyed my body why do you make these reviews because you need this body to last very long this are we together the gone are the days when people don't talk about this in church and they tell people the most important thing is your spiritual life and you see someone of 32 looking like 50. they ask him how old are you he said i will be 33 next year so, well, so why are you looking at his condition make crawfish bed no you are not a crayfish you are created in the image and the likeness of god some of those sayings we must start getting them out of the body of christ they look very nice but these are the things that authorize satan to destroy our lives hallelujah your health and some of us it is not even poverty it's carelessness write that word down this is a word that you should look at very carefully during your retreat many people's lives are destroyed including their health because of one word carelessness unattentiveness to details hallelujah number four review your assignment 
the reason for which God brought you. Review your purpose, your kingdom service. These are things that you review at a time of retreat. Lord, I look at the compass of my destiny. Did I make progress this year? Can I say from prophecy to manifestation, I have moved forward? You see, this assignment and purpose thing, you, you, you hardly even hear it again. People don't talk about it. It says, Lo, I come as it is written of me in the volume of the book to do your will. The reason why many people have time to waste their life is because they are not occupied with purpose. If purpose does not occupy you, anybody can call you any day and say, are you free, sir? Yes, come and follow me somewhere. God designed your time to be well invested fulfilling your assignment. This idleness that our generation has is because we are not occupied in purpose. And then the recent... Um, I would say trick of the devil is to make people busy but not moving forward. Motions like sitting on a rocking chair. The chair is rocking consistently but you are not making progress. Oftentimes Jesus would retreat and look, okay, I must be here. I must be there. Your assignment. Your purpose. I don't know my purpose, but you can look at your service in the house of God. Use that as a template. What was your level of commitment? What was your level of diligence? Are we together? Very important. This is what I do during my retreats. Number four. The fourth area. Number what? Number five. I beg your pardon. Your finance. Write it down. Your finances. You have to flog it out in the secret place. Are we together? Now you've looked at your spiritual life, mental transformation, your body, your health. Is that true? And then your assignment, then your finances. We're very unapologetic about the usefulness of financial resources, both in the quality of our lives and kingdom advance. I'm not one of those pretentious people that would downplay the role of financial resources in helping an individual live a useful life. I've shared it again and again with us that living to seek money all your life is a cost. It's not just bad, it's a cost. It's one of the most distracting strategies of Satan. When a man spends all your life looking for money, it's a cost. Nobody was ever designed to do that. What time then do you have in building? This chase for money has made us to leave our children to the hands of Satan. Has made us to leave our purpose. There are people called as prophets and apostles, but they only realize one week to their death. They spent their whole life chasing money and they never find it. Please let me say it again and again. Do not ever plan to continue pursuing money all your life. There is an exact time where God should help you put together financial resources that afford you the opportunity to serve God so that you can turn and focus on the more useful things. Making financial pursuit priority in your life forever is a cause. It may be within the time you are seeking, that's all right. So this is very important. Review. Because for some of us, our whole lives is built around money, money, and we never get it. You talk two minutes, money, everything, money. You say Jesus, the person replies back with money. Money, money, every time. You have to review. Is that true? Was I able to engage the keys that bring for wealth and abundance this year? Or I just had it and it didn't work? You will easily know whether you engage it by the results you got. Finance is one area where your disobedience shows immediately. Immediately. So you must be sincere. This year, God gave me one million naira. God gave me hundred thousand naira. What did I do with it? I made a mistake. I gave 100,000 Naira to 419ers. You don't jump that. What is the lesson that I have to learn there? 
Is that true? God gave me 200,000. I bought a shoe and I bought a shirt that is not yet my level to prove a point to people who are not interested. Oh Lord, forgive me. Don't say it's all right. Ask for forgiveness because that is sin. Is that true? When God gives you resources and you waste it, if nobody has told you it is sin, believe me. Lord, I gave you offering of 1010 Naira. I gave you offering of 2020 Naira. But my average dinner was 2,000 Naira. It's a sign that you are not a serious believer. I know you think, I'm not talking about money. You know that God has helped us. But it's important. These are some of the things that you do during your retreat. A measure of your passion for the house of God. And that includes with your resources. All this 1010 10 Naira giving. You know, most times we lie to ourselves that it doesn't matter. The amount does not matter. Are we not Bible students? He that soweth sparingly, what is sparingly? Small, scanty, shall reap, but he shall reap scanty. That's why you get one testimony in four months. Correct? You are reaping. But he that soweth bountifully, lavishly, extravagantly, he said he will reap. The Bible said that scriptures cannot be broken. So don't say that it does not matter. It could be a time for you. I remember it was in one of my retreats, honestly speaking, that the Lord challenged me on this. The level of giving was far less than the level of God's blessing on my life. And the Lord rebuked me. And I made up my mind and I made a vow. There is a minimum amount I will never give as offering again forever till Jesus comes. Yes, it's true. It's true. It's true. So review it. What do you understand about finances? Review it. If all you know about finances is business and job is better, you have to sit down and flog that area. Because neither of them in themselves will give you money. Number six, relationships. The sixth area that you will look at in your retreat is your relationships. Marital relationships, career relationships, business relationships, destiny relationships. Some of us almost wasted our year today because of the presence of bad and useless associations. Associations that should have nothing, nothing to do with our lives. It's all this, uh, it's our tribe, it's our church, it's our this. Is that true? The Bible says, he that walks with the wise will be wise. But it says the companion of fools will be destroyed. Relationships, it matters. Review them. Review them. Who did you give access to this year? Whose presence destroyed your productivity? Who did you give access to this year that destroyed your potential for more results? Who should you have given access to this year that would have improved your life? Some of you, your relationship here, you even need to go back and check with the Holy Spirit. What degree of access did you give him? Relationships. Now, when you review these six areas, let me be honest with you. Your entire life revolves around these six areas. Your spiritual life, your mental development, your health and physical well-being. Is that true? Your assignment, your career, whatever it is, your financial resources and your relationships. There is no man that will ever be a failure if he excels in this area. Usually what I do is that I scale all six areas and look at the best performing area and the worst performing area. And I must answer why. I wouldn't just say I will improve. Why? Why was this the best? And why was this the worst? If your relationships for inside, for instance, was the worst this year, what don't I know about friendship? What have I not learned? Maybe I'm neglecting honor. Maybe I'm not valuable enough. Maybe I'm too much of a talkative. Maybe I'm not somebody who can be committed secrets. Maybe I'm somebody who is not friendly. Maybe I'm someone who is jealous. Lord, help me. You write it down. Are you seeing how people grow in retreat? You never come out of that experience the same. No, sir. 
people jump into the new year and laugh and fast for 10 days or 21 days and become the same old them again. And you see, the Bible says you never put new wine in an old wine skin. If your wine skin is old, nothing new will ever come. Beloved in Christ, thank you for watching this video. If you are new here too, I would entreat you to kindly subscribe to this channel for me and then hit on the like button. Also, I would want you to share this message across. I would want you to do one thing for us. Kindly tell us in the comment section where you're watching us from and you've got any testimony for us. Kindly let us know. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain be